Hello and welcome disruptors. Welcome to another intriguing episode, an enlightening one of Mindset Mastery Moments. Today, we embark on a transformative journey into the realms of healing and empowerment. Yes, we have to have a certain mindset that empowers us to heal from the inside out. Did you know that studies show that 68% of individuals are influenced by their early father childhood relationships in ways they may not fully realize? Yes, even I too, along my journey, had to uncover layers of my father daughter relationship and specifically spend time healing and restoring myself in those areas. Today, we will delve into this uncharted territory with our next special guest. She is an extraordinary, true trailblazer in the healing and personal development space, and she is fostering healthy connections all over the world as she speaks to audience in churches, in corporate communities, and in virtual uh, forums. She is someone that I am most proud to bring to you all today so you can heal and be empowered in looking closely into the journey of your mindset when it comes to healing your father-child relationship. Today, my guest is none other than Jeezy Denard. Jeezy, we welcome you to Mindset Mastery Moments, and we're so happy to have you. I'm so glad to be here, Dr. Alyssa. Thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to our discussion today. Oh, it's going to be fire. I couldn't wait for this one. I was going over our conversation before and I couldn't wait to get here. But before we dive into this conversation, I have the honor and privilege of telling you a little bit more about Jeezy. She is in the world of empowerment and healing. And a few of the names that shine brightly when we think about how we should really take a closer look into shifting our mindsets and overcoming limiting beliefs about what really happened in our childhood. She is a speaker, an author, consultant, father-child relationship healer, passion for fostering healthy connections as she's sparked by her personal journey of meeting her own father at the age of 17. She became a professional signature for this conversation. With diverse three-decade career, Gigi has explore the intricates of her human experience from service excellence to leadership development. Yes, they're all inter interrelated and that's why we're excited to have her today. She has helped individuals create the identity with cultivating communication mastery and kingdom living. As a state champion winning orator in high school, Gigi embarked on the journey as an influential motivational speaker and the only female speaker at the inaugural Fathership Conference. I said the only female speaker at the Father Shift Conference, yet where all the boys were, they're like, we need you, girl. And she's going to share that little story. I love hearing about it. She is definitely girl power in it. We're recording this episode just at the weekend of Women's International Day. And so no other better to hear her tell us a little bit about that journey, getting into the crowd where the boys were. She has engaged an inspired audience with captivating narratives, transparency, and empathy. She has a National Merit Scholar with a BA in print journalism from Howard University and a JD from the Stanford Law School. Boy, I tell you, this lady is loaded. You guys better get your chairs and your beverage and sit yourself down because she's going to teach you some lessons. Delving into the themes of healing father-child relationship, personal and professional greatness, and the pursuit of happiness, we do not have to say anymore because everything I just told you is just a little pin drop in who she is because she's going to unleash her knowledge and empower us to heal from way back in our childhood to now. Gigi, welcome again. We're Thank so you. proud and happy to have you. We're proud of you and we're honored to have you. Thank so you. Gigi, tell us about yourself through your own voice. Sure. So I, as you mentioned, I ended up in this space to be a conduit for healing, which really began with my own journey. I met my father for the first time at age 17. Mm. And without even understanding what God would do with that, that void, mm. my own healing journey, meeting my father, 
going through the layers of things that I had to go through for years uh, to he was healing, I was healing. Mm. <laughs> we had the benefit of actually being able to do it together in, in some ways. Yeah. But um, it was more than what it might have looked like. You know, from the outside, you think you get to meet your dad and if it's all good, it's all good. But there's all this stuff that's been growing in you, mm. you know, over this time. So the hole was a lot bigger than I realized that it was. Even when I met him, I had just kind of begun dating. And so that that void had created uh, a need, mm. a need for affirmation and affection that I had not gotten from a father, which in my case ended up propelling me into relationships with men far too old. I was dating men that were seven to 14 years my senior as a teenager. Mm. And at the time, you know, I didn't really understand that's what was going on. Hey. It was really only in hindsight <laughs> after meeting my dad and also just kind of after realizing that there were still some pain associated with having missed him all those years. Wow. Uh, mine was sort of a, a, a story that is not, I think, the most common that I run into, in, in which case my father did not leave us. My mother left my dad oh. and forbade him to have any contact with me. So oh, wow. my dad actually wanted to find me and was not permitted to. So wow. I had a lot of anger toward my mom. I had a Finding lot of anger this toward out. God for, yeah. for allowing that to happen. Yeah. And I think with my dad, it was just more such a sense of loss. Mm. Um, it turned out that personality wise, I am way more like my father. So growing up, I felt very much a misfit in my home. I so looked like my mother. Identify. Yeah, I looked like my mother, but I was so not like my mother that it just felt like, you've got to be kidding me. Whose child am I really? This Ooh. can't be the case. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but that is so much like- It was, yeah. Wow, I had a, is... Yeah, no, I had a whole story. Oh my goodness. I created a whole story. And yeah. so this kind of goes to this mindset thing. We will do things to try to master our mindset. We will, we will create things Yes. to try to make us feel okay yes. with who we see ourselves as right. and the circumstances under which we're living, right? Absolutely. So that did not make sense to me. So mm -hmm. I created a story that made more sense. So my mother's youngest sister and I were very close. She and I also look quite a bit alike. So my rationale was she had me out of wedlock and they gave me to the other sister who was getting married. I made I up the whole this. thing. You know what Listen, I'm saying? It was just you're like, like, I'm going to make this make sense. Make sense. I'm going to yes. make this make sense. Yeah. yeah. Because I was a lot more like her. So I was like, okay, see, that I could maybe believe, you know? <laughs> nothing and else had so, up. <laughs> nothing else and added I, up. I hope the viewers are leaning in because <laughs> literally we do this. Yes. At a we very do. early age. Yes. And you don't even realize that there's just so much. Uh, you know the term fake news that we need. yes yeah <laughs> and we believe it we and do we live we believe by it. that and those are yes. those limiting beliefs that we create so or, oh i love this keep going and, and often then we don't we, then we have messed up memories mm -hmm. because our memories are infused by these things we've created for ourselves right Jeez. so when i met my dad it all started falling into place i mean right away um one of the things i discovered is that we wrote just alike i mean he brought something with him and I read it and it freaked me out because I was like, I could have written this. You know, it could have been my writing kind of thing. Um, he was also an orator and uh, we were both chess aficionados. So the first night we met, we stayed up and played chess till 4.30 in the morning. Uh -huh. You know, there were just all these little pieces that were so much more personality wise like him, it you know, sense. and I like jazz, you know, the most. My mom was more into spirituals. So it was kind of like, all these pieces of myself that I had not been able to identify with anyone. Right. You know, just like, was like, wow, this, this makes so much sense. Even my younger brother, a few years ago, we were hanging out mm -hmm. and he was discovering some of the things because he didn't really know the history. Right. And as he was discovering, and I was talking about different kinds of things that I had in common with our dad, mm -hmm. he was like, wow, you have so much in common with him. You're so much like him. So my question for you, just for our audience who might be tracking us, you had never met him before because you had were never separated met him from before. since childhood, from since, birth. 
Like, since six months old, of course, I don't six have months old. So you don't remember because yeah. that is so that's important for us to track with you. Yeah. Because now you said you missed him, and because yes. of your longing for your dad, because yes. you are a part of your father and your mother. Correct. I hope everyone's listening. So when you don't like your mother, you don't like part of yourself. Okay. Exactly. Yes. When and and so you're telling us it's possible to miss someone we've never had. Oh yeah, absolutely. Please absolutely. tell us a little yes. bit about that. So even when I was a little girl, even when I was little, so one of the things I I, I don't really know how to rationally explain it. I can only tell you that it was true. Mm -hmm. I was a daddy's girl with no daddy around, and I knew it. Like I knew it, like I knew my name. So mm -hmm. I remember in elementary school on a bad day, I'm having a tough time emotionally or whatever. I would doodle my father's last name like all over my stuff. I wasn't using his last name. I was using my mother's maiden name. I have an older brother that is not my father's child. And I think she wanted to just keep it tight and everybody using the same name when I right. went to school. Right. And so she got my social security card and her maiden last name. But my birth certificate has my dad's name on it. And I knew that name. Right. So I would like doodle his name. I would daydream about him all the time. And mm -hmm. I was fully persuaded that my father would rescue me if anything ever happened. I mean, I like I knew it, even though I didn't know him. I was fully persuaded of that. Now, do you think that was provoked by the longing that he may have had to connect with you as well? I think that is possible. If and in seeing this, you know, after the fact, absolutely. Yeah. Um, because he definitely had an equal longing. In fact, he tried to find us. So this, okay, my, my family tree is more like a vine. It gets mm -hmm. a little interesting, maybe hard to track. I'll try. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my mother's middle sister mm -hmm. was married to my father's first cousin. Somebody okay. he actually grew up in the same household with. Oh. my dad and his first cousin mm -hmm. so my uncle slash cousin second cousin always knew where i was and my dad would try to get the information out of him but my mother had a very very strong domineering personality and nobody wanted to deal with that her. yeah so he was like dude i'm sorry but i'm not in it so yes i was aware and even after i met my dad and i went to his house for the first time, mm. he had actually been collecting information on me, like trying to find me. I had been in a couple of newspaper articles. Somehow they had made his way to him. It's way to them. I hadn't sent them, but somebody had, I, I don't even know. Right. But so he had been trying to track me. Right. Um, so, so it was I, you tracking him that, that you were able to, you guys were correct. Able to, okay. Yeah. What happened was I, um, when I was 16, and I think, yeah, maybe at the beginning of my senior year, the end of my junior year, I asked my mother if I could invite him to my high school graduation. Oh. I kind of been gearing up for that for months, like bracing myself for, for her response. response. Yeah, she might have. And it was sort of it wasn't enthusiastic, but it wasn't a no. It wasn't. Okay. She said she said, I don't care if you can find him. So I was like, worked for me because the other thing that had been happening. So this same aunt that was the middle girl, yeah. um, several years before that. Okay. So this is going to freak a few people out. <laughs> warning, warning. This is oh one of those goodness. freaky moments in my life. So mm. I was hanging out at this aunt's house because her son and I were very close. He's yeah. a year and a half younger than I. And he and I are first cousins and we were very, okay. very tight. Right. More like my little brother. And so we're hanging out. I was hanging out at her house. And just randomly, I said, you know, I always wanted a brother named Ricky and a brother named Mickey. Just like, boom, I was 14. And her face just went like blanched. I was like, what did I say? Right. And it had changed. And it was that, you know what, I don't care. Look. And she said, well you do have a brother named Ricky and you have a sister named Mickey. And these yeah. were the ones you were growing up with. Oh, no, not at all. Never knew anything about these kids. No, they're older. Never. They're from his first marriage. Didn't know anything about them at all. Like nothing. Now, you just I told me some, some <laughs> astro. <laughs> you know, my, my uh, those who know me know that Dr. Elise is probably trying to find some cosmic reason for this. 
Yeah, because, I call it a word of knowledge because I there's I didn't know anything about my dad's first marriage. Like the nothing. The thing is, I believe we do know things. We know, I feel like because we are created in God's image and likeness, we know uh -huh. things. We just don't tap into it. But your desire was so strong that you were it was that could be to you that, in, that could be how it realm. got there. But I yeah, no. So that. I do believe it was a word of knowledge, and yes. so it was very. Uh, but of course, it freaked her out. But she also decided that day to start having me have these secret conversations with my father's father, my paternal grandfather, Daddy Ed. Oh. But whenever I would visit her between the ages of 14 and 17, you started connecting. I would talking with Daddy Ed on the phone. Yeah. And so when the issue came up about inviting my dad to the graduation, what I did was I sent my father's invitation to my grandfather, hoping that he would forward it to my dad wherever he was, because I, okay. I still didn't know where my father was at that point. Yeah. And uh, I found out later that they weren't talking, but he did it anyway. <laughs> Oh, he good. Because anyway. I yeah. think he's looking, he knows he feels like you deserve that because you had been connecting yeah. and building a relationship. With a relationship with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's yeah. giving you a solid, not his. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not his son. Because right. they have exactly. a new their father right. child relationship. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, my so, goodness. But that's how that all wound up. And then he actually got the invitation the night before my graduation. I was in Fort Lauderdale. He had just left Miami and had no idea we'd only been an hour apart. Oh he was goodness. doing a speaking engagement in Miami, had gotten back home to Georgia and found the invitation. Wow. So he couldn't come back the next day. <laughs> right. Because I totally understood. Right. But uh, he did come two months later in July. And that's when you guys spent. May, and that was when we met for the first time. Yep. My goodness. Yeah. What a journey. That is a yeah. whirlwind. I, I, I feel like a lot of us, you were conscious of your desire to connect with your dad. Yes. But do you, in your journey and in your work, do you find that a lot of, of your clients and individuals you work with, they are ignorant to the fact of that desire and that longing for their father? Well, or they're I, trying to erase it, maybe. I think often they're trying to suppress it or erase it. I don't, I don't, I do not believe that there's anybody on the planet Yes. Who actually doesn't want that relationship with their parents. Come on. Come I just on. don't believe that that's true. Now, I believe that some people have been hurt out of it. Yeah. I believe that some people have been talked out of it. In the case, for instance, of my older siblings, I will say about my mother, she never said anything negative about my father. Mm -hmm. So that didn't color my perception. Which is great. Which was great. Mm -hmm. uh, my older siblings, not so much. So their mother said a lot of negative stuff about my dad, which mm -hmm. created, even as his life changed, it didn't make them open, the younger of the elders, didn't mm -hmm. make them open to hear and mm -hmm. heal and mend. Mm -hmm. uh, the older kids had a bit of their own memories. Right. And so they were, they kind of could juxtapose their own memories against what mom was saying. Right. Their mother was saying, but the younger kids really didn't have their own memories. My dad and his first wife got married when they were really young, like 18, 19. Right. And then after all of that and five kids uh, later, he was actually in jail. Oh. So they didn't grow up with him. Right. Right. The kids didn't grow up with him at all. So they didn't um, know him. So they didn't know. So, so their mother's input was really what, what? they knew. Right. Right. So that made it really hard for them uh, mm -hmm. to go through a healing process, actually. It does. And so so there's that. So sometimes you have people that just want to avoid it altogether because mm -hmm. it's bad memories. I have a brother I have never met because uh -huh. of that. Because of that. So, that yeah. Feeling. So it was just like it, it was cut off by his mom and he felt like to honor his mom, he should just never interface with us. And even though he went to school with some of them, I didn't grow up with that older set there in Delaware, but he did. He grew up in the same high school and all that kind of stuff with them. But he just but, um, kept yeah, his distance. Totally kept his distance. So I think those are different things that happen, right, in the dynamic. Yes. Um, I think sometimes people just out of hurt. Yes. Kind of bury the desire. They they kind of treat it like whatever. Yeah, I know whatever. Right. And it's not really whatever. Right. It's absolutely affecting them whether they choose to accept it or not. Yes. And that's the part that I'm trying to help people understand that it's it's an intrinsic 
sort of desire about it, it to which we respond yeah emotionally mentally spiritually etc okay and then make other decisions based on th that feeling and response oh we make decisions based yes. on those feelings and response subconsciously yes. and consciously correct. correct oh that's it right there whether and it's is, yeah whether it's subconscious and you're looking for something like me looking for love in all the wrong places Right. Whether it's conscious, you meet somebody, let's yeah. say, he reminds you of your dad. You don't have pleasant memories of your dad. You immediately cut that person off and you're like, uh-uh, I don't know, know you. I don't want to know you and don't ever talk to me again. Right. You know, but that's <laughs> just, part of you be breaking like, as well. Yeah. But if you think you're protecting yourself, mm -hmm. but you're not really because you're just covering stuff up. So that's the other thing. I think people sometimes think they're okay yeah. because they've done such a good cover up job. Yeah. But underneath that is all this scar tissue and My all these God. wounds that really haven't healed. Ooh. And so you're carrying that around with you. Yes. yes. You know, it's literally like being diseased and not knowing it. And you're carrying that into every other relationship. I agree. Oh, I can see that. Ooh, Ooh we just got through that first episode. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors with our special guest to help us heal. We're going to talk about finding peace and forgiveness. We'll be right back. We are back with our phenomenal guest, Miss Jeezy Bernard. And she opened up a worm of emotions, even for me. And I know that our listeners and viewers, Gigi, are definitely tuned in. And so you went through what most would call this sort of a emotional roller coaster, even to the point when you're sitting at 17 and sitting there with your dad playing chess till four and, and later, you know, early in the morning. Walking away from that experience, I can only imagine that you would have this finally, but oh my gosh, why was I kept from this? And mm -hmm. why didn't he look a little bit harder for me? And whatever, all these questions that I'm making up in my head, just following along your journey mm -hmm. to that 17 years. But at some point you had to find your, find your spot and your peace mm -hmm. with whatever had happened mm -hmm. in order to move forward, which mm -hmm. leads into the forgiveness factor, mm -hmm. right? Because you would have felt angry. You would have had resentment. You would have probably developed some level of unforgiveness for both parents and maybe even the adults in your journey, because anybody could have changed that for you at any point to where mm -hmm. you can look at someone and say, yeah, that I belong here. Mm -hmm. I look like my mom, but everything about me is my dad. And now it makes sense. I am a whole mm -hmm. person, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us, Gigi, what did that whole journey of finding peace and, and, and uncovering forgiveness look like for you? Well, it definitely was a journey. It was not something that happened immediately. Mm, um, I can imagine. Now, because I was aware that my mother had left my dad, mm. I really didn't have anger towards my father. Mm. There was a lot of sadness mm -hmm. and a lot of sense of being robbed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like you're saying, you know, of of getting all this stuff from him all those years and, and not just now, right? right? So there was a sense of being robbed. But he himself, you know, confessed that he had tried to get to me through various people in my uh, family, right? Right. And I know my mom. <laughs> so... <laughs> my mother's note was no joke you know she was tough and she was determined and pretty much what she said went mm. so i understood everybody's kind of like yep not getting in that sorry love you not getting in that so i wasn't really upset with them i yeah. was certainly very grateful when my aunt decided to just break that first barrier and let me start talking to my grandfather Mm. So I considered that a tremendous blessing. And since we just kept it in house, you know, there was no risk of anybody getting in trouble. Um, but I mean, I had seen my mother respond to things, you know, like that summer before that, I wanted to get my ears pierced. Okay. My mother, there were five girls. My mother was the only one who did not want to get her ears pierced. She thought it was barbaric. So <laughs> she didn't want me to get mine pierced either. Okay. But I went home for the summer, went out with her oldest sister, and I 
picked her older sister because she was the closest to my mom. So I figured, okay, even if she gets mad, she's not going to be mad at her for a long time because they're really close. <laughs> so I had her take me out to the mall to get my ears pierced. So when my mom came to pick me up at the end of the summer, hey, what could she do? They're pierced, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> but but I watched her reaction. You know, she was definitely not a happy camper. But I knew that my aunt would negotiate. You know, my oldest aunt would negotiate that on my behalf, kind of thing. Right. But but that wasn't always the case, and so. You know, she and my, the aunt that I was closest to, they actually had kind of a lot of fights over me. I was aware of the tensions yeah, and tried to not do anything that would produce that, mm. right? To like produce that kind of tension. Yes. So it really was a few years after meeting my dad, because I honestly thought once I met my father and our relationship was going so well, I too was deceived into thinking I was okay. Right. I honestly thought like, okay, the mystery has been solved. We're together now. We're having a great time when we see each other. We yeah. can pick up the phone and call each other anytime. We can talk about anything. Right. I'm loving this relationship. And yet, so mm. um, I went home one, might have been like when I was 19, 20. I went home for the holidays and my mom and I got into this argument and she said that I had been seeming like agitated. Hmm. Like what was wrong with me? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Subconsciously but, something yeah, going on, but you can't, on, it's right? not coming in the conscious. Coming, right? But it was interesting that she brought up something. She said, is it because you don't get to see your father as often as you like? Hmm. Now, when she said it, I was like, huh, that could be. Like I had not thought that you know, consciously. Yeah. But when she said it, that kind of bore witness, like that could be part of the problem. You know, because I wasn't seeing him all the time. At this point, I'm in college. I'm in DC. Yeah. He lives in Georgia. Okay. Um, so no, I'm not seeing him frequently. No. There was one point at which I can't remember what year that was where we spent time together and he drove back up to DC with me. Oh. Um, so that was cool. Um, I had to fight. I do remember being angry. Mm. I was 25, so healing hadn't totally happened by then. I right. was 25 and I decided I wanted to spend Christmas with my father. Mm. I had never spent Christmas with my father. Right. I always and 25 now. Right. And now I'm 25. And it occurred to me that even though I met him eight years ago, I've still never spent Christmas with my dad. Right. And I wanted to go spend Christmas with my father. And when I told my mom, she flipped out. No, don't mess up mommy's Christmas. That's one thing I learned. But I was like, I was like, I'm sorry, but you all need to get over it. All of you. You know, I told the whole family, I said, I have never, ever in all my life spent Christmas with my father and I am going to this year. Right. I will see you all at New Year's. Right. You all have been with me every year of my life. Get over it. <laughs> Exactly. Nothing is so, going to break. Exactly. Nothing is going to break. Nothing is going to happen between now and when I see it. Okay? So I did. So I went and spent Christmas, my one and only Christmas with mm -hmm. my father. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, he was also, uh, at that point, he'd had some severe kidney issues. He was on dialysis. Um, and so I even was like up with him at four o'clock in the morning to go to the hospital with him. It was very cool. I had wanted it to snow. He did not. But when we walked out <laughs> to go to the van, it had started snowing. I was like, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so not only did I get my dad, I got a white Christmas with my dad in Georgia. Oh, that's you know, perfect. It was perfect, right? And um, so I didn't mind getting up and going to the hospital with him because I was like, all of these moments are precious. They just come too few and far between. Yes. You so know? that was, I. but I do remember being really angry and like, to me, it didn't make sense that they didn't understand that. Right. You know, it's like, you guys have got to be kidding me. Because they're you, thinking, my thought is, you have lived so long without him. What is this urgent <laughs> desire to yeah. be with him? I'm thinking that's what that may have been thought thinking. might be. And yeah. so if they're not in your shoes and you're right, not correct. the one who was literally thinking your aunt's probably your mother. <laughs> because you just don't make sense to anyone. Exactly. I feel like that's that's so much. It's very 
and it happens in so many of our lives, even when it's not concerning that right. sometimes it's about the career you choose and right, no one sure. understands why it's so important for me to be a truck driver. Right. They're like, but you're so pretty and so smart and I'm right. not a truck driver, I'm making it up, but right. they'll have all these reasons for why, why you this is corporate exactly. America is the best yes. thing for you once they get there. Cause they made stories up since you were right. A kid. Right. You were exactly. Cute enough, you were all this and she's going to be that. And now you're like, Nope, gonna be a truck driver. Right. Now you just shattered their dream. Right. But all exactly. this time they were suppressing you with their dream. Right. And exactly. that is the imposing of emotions that we do in especially familiar relationships. Yes, we I do. Believe. I, I and agree. that is the hardest thing to forgive sometimes because now you have to forgive the absent, the taking, the pulling, and the right. dragging. But now you right. you're trying to literally, I would say you're just trying to survive. Exactly. Your at that your point. emotion and you can't yeah. have those. Those are not right. yours either. <laughs> but how did you model through that? Like, so, so I mean, I, I went ahead and life. I went home, you know, I went to my dad's house and just said, you know what, people, I will see you. I will see you at New Year's. And I just kind of cut off all conversation at that point. I'm like, whatever. The, you, and nobody's getting me a present that's going to die by New Year's <laughs> Day. You know, seriously, I will see you all in New Year's. And, um, <laughs> But it did, it did, I think, sort of raise, sometimes we have suppressed resentments. Yes. And I think that did sort of raise some resentments to the surface that turned out to be a good thing later on. Yeah. So fast forward a couple more years, um, I'm uh, out of grad school now and my assistant pastor at the time, our pastor's wife, had a lot in common with my mom. Mm-hmm. So there were these triggers that would happen. She and I would be riding along, talking, listening to music, everything's good. And then she'd say something. She'd say something that was one of those things that my mom used to say that I didn't like kind of things. Uh -huh. And I would kind of shut down. Now I knew that she didn't understand what was going on, yeah. but at the time I really couldn't explain it. Mm. But because I was in lay leadership within my church, I was like, okay, I need to be in sync with my leadership. Yeah. So I asked her, I said, can we just talk? Because I think there's probably something you need to know. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, maybe you can help us both through all of this. So I went to her really with that. She kind of laughed and she said, you know, my husband gets this a lot from guys who've had issues with their father. She goes, but I don't, I don't see this too often. I said, yep, it would be me. I said, so... <laughs> So I told her I wasn't close to my mom. She was super close to her mom. I was like, I was not close to my mom. There's a lot of stuff. I don't think you mean anything by it, but it triggers this thing in me. And then I'm hurt and I'm mad. And I don't know how to respond to you because I'm just reliving this past hurt all over again in the middle of it. And Shannon and I ended up just talking. She just kind of had me just talk, free fall, you know, just yes. stream of consciousness, whatever came to mind, talk. We, we hit a certain point. This is like hours. Like we talked for hours. Yes. We hit a certain point. She goes, okay, I'm going to start praying over you. She goes, I think there's some things you probably need to renounce. She goes, and I'm not sure that they're going to make sense to you or me. She goes, but whatever comes up, just say it. Just say it okay. out loud. That's whatever good. Comes up, just say it. So she started praying over me and stuff. And I started crying. And what came out was that I was angry still with my mother for mm -hmm. not having let me grow up with my dad. Mm -hmm. And I was angry with God for letting it happen. Yes. And once all of that came out and I cried a river, like maybe an ocean, <laughs> oh. I was crying so hard. I literally thought I might have a heart attack. Oh my God. That intense. Oh my gosh. Hyperventilating and all. Yes. That, hyperventilating that's it. I call it the brutal, ugly cry. Yeah. The brutal, ugly it. cry. And yeah. so she had her arms around me and I was rocking at first. I rocked so hard that we both landed on the floor. That's how bad it was. Oh, wow. Yeah, you kind of bad. body slammed her. Yeah. <laughs> with emotion. Exactly. Man, that's exactly. in a bad way, but in a really yes, emotion. Exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, but hey, the dawn came up by dawn came. We literally saw the sunrise that night and I was freed. Yes. And uh, it changed my dynamic with my mom. Yeah. You know, it really did. It really did a lot for me. So around the issues with my dad, I think that that was sort of like 
a culminating piece mm -hmm. of freedom. There were some other things that I still had to deal with with my mom that didn't have to do with my dad. Right. And those came off in layers later. Mm -hmm. um, but with around my dad, I think that was sort of like the peak of everything. And then I was really at peace around the past. Right. You know, where it was like what happened, happened, you know, even sometimes when I would talk to my father, mm -hmm. um, because at the beginning it was hard for him. You know, yeah. I'm now like 17. Yeah. He never had a chance and to do have the of those longing things. too. Yeah. And he, he has a longing, longing too. Yeah. So at the beginning, we'd have like these kind of head bumps where I'd be like, okay, look, I'm not seven. He would say <laughs> certain things, you know, <laughs> like he wants to be, be like, daddy, daddy hold now. up. Yes. <laughs> so he was back in that mode and he would apologize and he would say, okay, I know I'm sorry. I just missed the fact that I never got a chance. Right. To be and are you his only girl? Were you his only no, girl? No, but I am the youngest girl. Ah, got you. Which I'm he would have been wiser girl. at the time of your birth. Yes. Of, yeah. Yeah. I'm the youngest girl. And of the girls, I was the one who really had the relationship with him. Right. His right. other relationships were really with the boys. Okay. There was a lot of friction with him and the older girls. Mm. I mean, I understood it at some level. Yeah. It did cause other layers of issues with my siblings. Okay. My relationship with him, you know, when I went to the house, one of the things I discovered, mm -hmm. my dad had three sets of kids, right? I'm, but I'm the only mom. child of both my parents. Oh, oh. And, right. So, oh my gosh, that explains a lot of the loneliness and longing. Oh yeah, all of that, right? And when I went to his house, he had a picture of everybody. Oh, good. But of me, he had more than a picture. Like he had a little shrine, pictures, <laughs> articles. Like I was like, and you wonder why they don't like me. Yeah. <laughs> you set me up for this. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what in the world? Are you yeah. kidding me? Well, uh, now is that going to tell us a little bit about how he felt about your mother? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So we won't even go there. We not. Cause that's we, their we business. We won't go there. But yeah. I just wanted but to that, see because very much I so like there's I will a psychology. Say there mm -hmm. is a psychology, which I have discovered and have helped some people through yes how especially men who have children with many women yes their relationships with those children are very much influenced by, by their, their relationship with their that one that mother i agree very I, much it's why i brought it up very very much if that would be a wound that some some ch some it children does. would have yeah. to heal because now you have the sibling rivalry you don't know yeah. why but it's that created in the this dynamic of dynamic. how they parent Correct. the father and the mother yes. Yes. everything about that very much Thank so, you. so yeah. i could see i could see that very much as i met my sibling groups mm. so i have two younger brothers well I had two younger brothers my young younger brother died last year suddenly but my of my two younger brothers and my older siblings my father's relationship with their mothers was extremely different than, than my father's with relationship moms. with my mom right when he was married to them the, the marriages were very different so yes it was very much a reflection of that mm -hmm. which i also understood that better later than i did at 17 to 19. of course exactly. but um but yeah, I was just like, oh my God, okay, this explains a lot. But the same thing happened with my grandfather, mm -hmm. um, the one that he had. Um, I there went through a period where my siblings stopped talking to me except my oldest brother. And I was trying to figure out like, what's the deal? I have not done anything to you people. Your daddy's like, what favorite. The world. But what I found out, I finally got out of my sister's room. I knew she knew. She's like the glue in the family. Mm -hmm. she, everybody tells her everything. So I finally was <laughs> I like, so look, I know, I know you know. So you need to tell me what the heck is going on. Yeah. And she said it was because they're saying that daddy had talks about you all the time. And I'm like, okay, like that's my fault. You know, like I'm, I'm invested into to building talk. and nurturing this. Relationship. And that was a big difference, which I did. It took me a long time to understand that whole piece. Yeah. So they were with him all the time. So I assumed they had, that a they had close relationships. Yes. yes. Not necessarily. I discovered that it was more a, he had money and they knew how to get it from him kind of thing. So mm -hmm. here's the new granddaughter who doesn't know him. So I'm very much into the relationship. Right. Because I, that's I what want, you long for. That's exactly. what I longed for. Yeah. Right? And it messed up everybody. It messed up everybody's paradigm. Even his wife. At that yeah. point, my grandparents were, you know, separated, had been for years. Yeah. But his wife 
didn't get it and didn't like it either because suddenly he was doing things that he had never done before. For so anybody, I think probably the, not even his own children. Could be. So yes. I think the straw I would that say broke I the camel's back yeah. was when he took me to the mall. So yeah. how crazy does, to me, that's just like really crazy. He's my grandfather, he took me to the mall. Why would anybody lose their mind over that? Well, apparently, because he had never, ever, never ever, done ever done that for anyone. Yeah. And why you all of a sudden? And yeah. part of it was because I insisted. He kept trying to give me money to go shopping. I said, I don't want the money. I want you to take me. Right. You want to hang out with you. Shopping with a yes. person, an older man that you have DNA with and that yeah. you you didn't have to do anything or be anything. Right. Yeah. To have his companionship. Yeah, exactly. Because you so, would have shared earlier that you went through a couple of dating older people yeah, and you yeah. had no business, but you were doing that because you had this void, not void. because you even wanted to be with them right, necessarily. Right. So you so, were fixing that and healing that I in was yourself. To fix that. And so mm -hmm. he he ended up, you know, uh going along with me eventually and taking me shopping. And I didn't know until afterwards that that went through like the grapevine, like nobody's business. Everybody freaked out. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Right. Cause your, but, your, your family with, that you grew up with was yeah. mad at you cause you were busy with this new family. And now the new family didn't like having you around because you were getting all these privileges. Okay, yeah, way crazy. to become the, the most hated person in both yeah, exactly, family trees. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So there was, you know, so there's all of that that you're dealing with in going mm -hmm. through this process, right? Yeah. Um, you know, now it's all good. I have a decent relationship with both sets of siblings, you know, kind of thing. Right. Um, it's taken something to, for that to happen. Actually, one of the sisters I got closer to after our father died, don't really understand all of that, but, but that's what happened. So I just take it. I was like, okay. I don't know what all that was about. Um, but I also, something that you mentioned earlier about being lonely, I didn't realize mm. how alone I felt in this whole family dynamic mm. until my father's funeral. Oh, tell us about that. Because I'm the only one with no other siblings in my unit. So right. at the funeral, all the other siblings were with their group. Mm -hmm. Right? Wow. My mom came, oh, which good. was a blessing. That's I wasn't good. sure if she was coming, but she did come. Mm -hmm. But she wouldn't sit with me because she said she felt that would be disrespectful. And I was trying to explain, but I feel like so alone because everybody else has got somebody else. Yeah. So it was a wow. very strange dynamic. That came Something up I didn't you. know that I would feel right. until See? I was there. I love that you're sharing this because healing our friends, disruptors, viewers, and listeners is a journey. And until it's almost like having hit your elbow or scratching yourself somewhere and then you didn't know and then you just brush it against a desk or something and then, ow, what was that? Exactly. exactly. And so I talk about these owies in all of our healing processes, because yes. even when you've gone through breakup or a heartbreak, I talk to people about, well, you, you sit and heal. Yes. After a breakup, you sit and right. heal, you take time out just to be with yourself and reconnect with who you are right. and what your true values and beliefs after coming out with that. But the healing continues. continues. That's so right. get the people continues. around you who are good for your nervous system. And if <laughs> yeah. it's that relationship, yeah. if it's yeah. a romantic relationship, only yeah. welcome people who will journey that with you because right. they are guaranteed to push your owies. Yeah. And you're going to scream and yell and them taking off wouldn't help you. Right. Correct. They have to be like, okay, you got an owie. Yeah. You yeah. got to work on it. How can I support you? Yeah. Not try so, to fix it for you. So now you came up with an owie. Yeah, exactly. After and I just didn't know. Years. Right. 17 years later. Wow. So I met my father at 17. We had 17 years together. So this is 17 years later. He's um, gone. And I, I did not anticipate feeling that. Mm. I was actually at a lot of peace when he died. I think it's because God gave me a heads up. Okay. So and that was coming. So I wasn't even like super distraught when he passed. Mm -hmm. But at the funeral, that sense, that awareness of like, wow, you are the, you're the only kid of his that is by it, 
him or herself Self. Yeah. that was like it felt so uncomfortable for a while mm. and then and then the flip the script kind of flipped afterwards because at the end when we went up the repass i had been really worried about how my mother and the current wife would interact yeah. and she came over to our well first the first wife with whom i had a great rapport Mm-hmm. I always had a great report from the day we met. We had a great yeah. report. Yeah. She, she invited me and my mother to sit with her and one of her daughters. Now that wow. threw me for a loop. I was like, okay, sure. Yeah. All right. A little surprised, but okay, we can do that. So we did. So that yeah. was pleasant. Yeah, that was. But then the current wife, that was a whole different issue. Um, she, I think she was the one who felt the brunt of my mother. I'll mm-hmm. put it that way. Mm. And, uh, but she came over, my mother stood up and she hugged my mother Mm. and I'm standing there going like, who are you and where did my mother go? You know, kind of thing. (laughs) And so after she left the table and my mom sat down, I was like, uh, what was that? It was like, she said, oh, she was just thanking me for the gift I sent her. I said, you did what? You sent her a gift. She had sent her a gift. Wow. And I was like, who are you? What have you done with my mother? I mean, I just Didn't did not recognize. see that coming like at yeah. all in a million years, not in a million years, yeah. but clearly there was other healing that was going on outside of my own healing in yes. all of this. Yeah. Um, so, so that was a good thing. And I, you know, I wasn't mad at it. I was just stunned, you know, yes. that helped ease some of the earlier tensions. Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, you know, so so I was blessed with one of the things that my dad and I did, and with this kind of gets to one of the ways that we kind of dealt with finding peace and forgiveness in our own journeys together uh-huh. was by sharing our story together. Okay. That's how the book began. It really okay. began with just yeah. we weren't writing a book. We were just sharing our story. And because of our writing styles being so similar, I thought it would just be cool. Like, hey, you write your part, I write my part, and I put yeah. it together, and that'll be cool and fun and something we did together. Yeah. Wow. That's all I really thought that was going to be. But Oh, wow. You know. Forgiveness. So forgiveness is the theme of, our, of this segment is just understanding that forgiveness is a journey. It is and a journey. you have to be open to when it comes up. Yes. To look deeper, pause yeah. if you need to, and work yeah. through it yeah. with diligence. Yeah. And take and I, I love I heard what I heard in your share is be gentle yes. to yourself and yeah. question the thoughts you think about. Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> question yeah. the thoughts you think about. We'll be right back as we dive into the three R's of healing with Gigi after a word from our sponsors. <laughs> 